if you have a woven pattern where the dart to fit your bust is on the armhole or at the bottom here angled from your waist up and it really throws you off you don't know how to make adjustments to that you don't know what to do with that dart i'm going to show you today how to just close up that dart and take it to the side here where it's much easier to work with stay tuned very practical hi sewing friends i'm karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com welcome to this channel that is all about sewing limitless sewing and i have a bonus video for you that is included in our woven top fitting series there's many episodes on the channel already we've gone over some of the patterns that i recommend to start fitting to start learning about fit how to measure yourself how to customize to your measurements both in circumferences and lengths i've also shown you how to actually blend your sizes on the pattern piece that you're working with lots of practical things that you have already seen the next big video in this series will be about fitting the bust full bust adjustment small bust adjustment and before i head into there i just want to do one little thing first that is something that you might encounter in your pattern that might throw you off and that is the place of the bust dart on your pattern so you might have a pattern that has a nice little bust dart that you recognize it looks pretty straight you might have another pattern where the dart starts down lower closer to the waist and it's just angled all the way up it might throw you off that there's that shape there and how are you going to cut that and modify that if you want to do adjustments to the bust also you might find a dart that's on the armhole and that is the case of the yellow top from closet core patterns it has a little dart right there and although this pattern does offer b c and d cup sizes you know you might have a larger cup size than that or a smaller you might have an a cup you might need to do a small bust adjustment or full bust adjustment and i think doing that based on an armhole dart is just not the best thing to do i'm going to show you these two scenarios where you can transform an armhole dart to a regular bust dart and to transform an angled dart to just a more straight regular bust dart that you can work with easier. Just a bit of paper, a ruler, a scissors, a bit of tape, all the things that you need for these types of projects, arts and crafts like I call them. <laughs> now let's see how to do an angled one. This is a pretty common feature you'll see. Even this top, the Seychelles top from Itch to Stitch has an angled dart. So it starts way down here, way below my bust. And it's just directed to the bust. So you can raise the dart legs and just place them a little bit higher so that it ends up being straight, easier to work with in my opinion. So let's see how we can easily do that as well. This is the original dart that is on the pattern. You can see it's slightly angled and I've drawn that in red. I'm going to be doing some lines on the pattern that are going to be green, that are going to just be reference lines and not ones I'm actually going to cut into. And then with blue, I'm going to be drawing the definite lines that are going to be the finished dart. You can see that on this pattern, you don't have the bust point marked on the pattern. On some patterns, you might find the dot or some asterisk and even written there, bust point. And that's good to know. If you don't know what it is and it's not on the pattern, one way to figure out what that is, I'm going to draw a line through the middle of this dart that I have here. You can see the center is right at that peak right there and through the tip. And I'm going to extend this by probably one and a half inches. That is usually how much a dart is backed off from the bust point on a pattern, just as a reference. And we need that bust point. A dart will always be directed towards the bust point. This one comes from below and is angled towards it. That will be the bust point for this purpose now. Now we want our dart to be angled straight. So we want the middle of this new dart to be perpendicular to the grain line. This pattern here could be cut on the fold or it could have a center seam that doesn't really matter but let's place our ruler here squared onto that so the edge of my ruler is against the center right there and it will go right past the bust point over here and I'm going to draw a line with this green marker here I hope you can see this green line <laughs> So when we do the transfer of the dart, I'm, I don't want to cut into there because that means that the middle of the dart won't be on this cross grain mark. Let's measure what is the width from here to the half point of the dart. What is it? We can measure this easily. In this pattern, it's 5 eighths of an inch. So I'm going to draw a line above this green line that is 5 eighths of an inch higher. There. This is the line I'm going to want to cut into to ensure that the middle of the new dart is going to be on the cross grain and not angled. Basically, I want the middle of my dart to be on grain. In this case, cross grain because it's horizontal. So let's draw this blue line here. This is the one I want to cut into. I'm going to choose the bottom leg of this dart and extend this line 
up to the bust point. You can see it's right there. What I want to cut now is that bottom that leg up to the bust point and then from this blue line up to the bust point and this will be a hinge point. What we want to do now is close this angled dart and open the same volume up here straight. So I'm just going to take this, rotate it here until it covers the upper dart leg. Rotate it there, close this dart and you can see how it opens up space up here. If you place the center front along the lines of my cutting mat, get your ruler, put it there, make it go right through the middle of this dart. You can see that the middle of the dart is right on the cross grain. You can see you can see the line there on the cutting mat going straight in between the dart volume right there and that's what i wanted to achieve i wanted to achieve a dart that is completely straight from the side and is directed towards the bust point right there but now we just need to fill this up with paper on the back i wish i had colored paper i don't i have this colored cardboard that i'm going to use which is going to make it really hard for us to true this dart and close it pink area will be the new dart but remember, the dart was backed away from the bust point by about an inch and a half. You never want the tip of the dart to finish right at the bust point. So let's back that off and redraw these dart legs right there and right there. You can see my new dart in blue. The tip of the dart has been backed away from the bust point by about an inch and a half. And then you just align that dot to the same opening here. Now the next step that you need to do when you create a new dart is to fold the dart closed and true the seam. Now I have done this with a, another scrap piece of paper that was easier to fold and manipulate. So I have the same thing done here. All you need to do is fold the dart closed like you sewed it. So you can see meeting there, fold the volume down like you would. And then you, you're going to have a lot of excess paper there. That is what I have right there. So then you would just put a ruler, make a straight line to make this even. And then when you open it, you're going to have this shape right there. So because I've already done this on this easy to work with paper, I'm just going to draw here what that shape was. And that's how the shape would be for this brand new dart that away and this will be the brand new dart that you can work with for your pattern it won't change anything we haven't made the bust point higher or lower or anything like that we've just redirected the dart to hit right from the side and not coming down from below in an angle so that is something you might want to try on your angled dart patterns there are some patterns that have this dart coming from the waist all the way up like that so you can do the same exact process and close that funny looking dart and just make it be straight on like that. And let's go ahead and take this armhole dart to the bust. Here we have another front piece and the difference with this one is that it has the bust shaping on the armhole. You can see the shoulders right here and how long and funny looking this shape is and it's because when you close that dart it'll form the normal armhole. If you want to work with this and do fitting adjustments, adjust the bust height, do a full bust adjustment on a design like this, it will just make it a lot harder. So I want to transform this dart and put it here on the side. I also want the middle of the new dart to be right on the cross grain. So I'll follow the same steps I did with the dart we just saw where it was coming from lower and angled up towards the bust point. In this case, I also don't know where the bust point is on the pattern, so I'm just going to determine one doesn't really matter it doesn't have to be that exact but of course it's not going to be right there so I'm going to draw a line through the middle of this armhole dart that I have here now because it's coming from above I'm pretty sure that the bust point is further away from this dart point than if it actually was here on the side on the bust I'm going to continue this line for about two inches we will assume this is a bust point right there so the thing with this one is that because this is so low when you want to draw a line across here, you're going to hit the armhole there. <laughs> but let's draw this line anyway. Remember that's not the line I'm going to be cutting into, but it's hitting the armhole. So I'm going to measure again what the half of this dart intake was. It's an inch. Now I'm, I'll mention that this particular pattern is drafted for a D cup. That's why the dart intake is larger. I will drop from here an inch, but that's the line I will actually want to cut. 
I am going to cut the line that is on the top that leg in this case and I'll start there and meet it right up to the bust point there. Okay, so I'm going to cut from the top that leg in this case up to the point and then from this other blue line down. So I'm going to close this armhole dart. I'm going to take this, rotate it, meet the other leg of the dart right there and just tape it closed. And you can see that I've opened this volume, but here on the side. I'm going to fill in the gap with some colored card so you can see what I've done. Again, I'm going to make this new dart shorter. You can't have it go all the way to the bust point. I'm, go I'm also going to back that off by two inches, which is what I extended here at the beginning and redraw this. I need to true this side as well. Again, I've got the same messy pattern work that I did here on this other scrap piece of paper. And where you can see the drawing there, that was the paper I used to fill the gap in. I also closed this dart like that, like it was sewn, folded all that excess down, got a ruler, made all that smooth. And then I get this shape on the side right there. So I'm going to draw that right there. If you're doing this at home, you would be using nice paper that you can work with and not cardboard like here. Now for this particular pattern, you will notice that the top that leg is quite close to the armhole. And this one has a 5.8 seam allowance. So your sleeve might end up being right there. And then the start of your dart very close to it. So every pattern will be different. You just need to see what you find and how you can adjust. But this armhole that is no longer there, it's here on the bust and this will be easy for you to work with and do small bust adjustments, full bust adjustments too. Not difficult to do, you just need to adapt to how the pattern is draft. You see that the space just under the seam was not going to be that great so I just lowered it a little bit. Do got that bust out there where it's going to be easier to work with and I'm just going to leave it like that because I'm actually not that much of a fan of an armhole dart. When I see a garment with a dart like that I, it just makes me think that it was a fix that was done after the fact to fix a gaping armhole. I don't know I'd just rather have it on the bust. I don't think a dart is a decorative feature as such. I think it's just a fitting feature and it's less seen here on the side than right here in the front of you. Personal preference, when I make the sheer low top again, I would just rather leave the dart over here at the bust. <laughs> make your adjustments, transform your darts, but don't worry too much about the bust height, about getting it exactly right. Because if you are doing this with the goal of doing a full bust adjustment or a small bust adjustment, the process of doing that is going to end up with a lower dart if you're adding length and width with a full bust adjustment. Or it's going to end up with a slightly higher dart if you're doing a small bust adjustment which takes away width and length. Do your full bust adjustment first and then finalize the fitting moving your dart up and down to where it has to be on your body. So in the process that we did now it's nice to have an approximate and do it based on the bust height of the pattern as such. Not really your bust height, just a tidbit because I've seen this topic discussed a lot, what do you do first? And I'll talk more about this, of course, in the full bust adjustment video, but I'm just putting it out there now because we did actually play with the dots a little bit. Don't worry about where it is placed, you know, just get it to the bust area of the way the pattern is drafted, not at the place where you need it to be on your body because after doing adjustments to the bust, it's not going to end up being there anyway. So <laughs> that's what I wanted to share with you today. I will see you again very soon with more sewing and as I mentioned the next big video in the fitting series will be about the bust. I'm already working on it and of course you'll see ill-fitting muslins, things to look out for on the fit of your garments that will tell you if a full bust adjustment is what you need. So I'm sure it's going to help you. I'll see you again very soon. Bye!